this week they did a great job, a, a physical team, and uh, especially this kid right here, and and, and our and our uh, our captain. Uh, I just can't say enough for them, you know. And a lot of our guys who came off the bench did a great job, and uh, we got a little bit of revenge from last year. Uh, we got back, and um, I'm just proud of them because they're working hard every 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 week. And now we we, we just got to keep it going. Uh, I'm just enjoying myself for the second win. I like the way we played the first two games. It's not no one individual winning ball games. It's a total team effort. Uh, guys coming off the bench as well, and, and, and that's the way we're going to win ball games is by everybody. It's not going to be by one or two guys. Uh, we're going to continue to play together as a team and win together as a team. Okay, anyone want to ask a question? Anybody can answer. Do you guys have any comment about uh, Drill Chief's physicality and competitive competitiveness competitive tonight, mainly Aaron we knew that we was going to get their best shot, uh, especially with them being 0-1 coming to the second week. They didn't want to fall 0-2. Um, but that's how they, they play. They're a physical team, uh, a team that likes to talk trash. But that's that's their personality, and they want a championship that way. And you can't take nothing away from them for that. Uh, we just kind of played through it. We kept our composure, and we mentally stayed focused and was able to close it out. Well, that's that's just something that we got a player where he's more agile than Kwame is a little bit. You know, he can guard the the the, 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 the small forward. He can guard the center. Uh, he's more aggressive. You know, but I think Kwame is a guy where we have to have a big man that's you know like a like a uh, O'Neal. You know, I'll, I'll play him when we play Tri City, and that'll be great for us. You know, so. You know, Reggie does a lot of things for us. He he gets us in, in, in a lot of stuff. He's attacking more, you know, and, and he's playing great defense. He keeps the energy in our game. And once he keeps the energy going for us, that's what we need. We, we lacked that last year. This year he keeps the energy. He didn't have a great game like he did last week. But what he did was he kept Al on his feet. And he, he frustrated Al a little bit. Al got out of his little game, and he started going back at him. And, and that's what I, I like out of Reggie. Reggie is one of them guys where you, you hate him on another team, but you love him on your team. And I love him right now on my team. Real quick, I, I don't know if you, you answered the question or if it was asked, but how did, how did you handle as far as composure was concerned? Because it was physical out there. And the guys were aggressive, and, and Al was – he got out of the game pushing and shoving. How were you able to keep them composed and come out with the victory? Well, that's how they played last year. And I, and I got a different team this year. Uh, you know, I added Quintel, Quindale, and then I added Reggie. So I have people that can guard them and be physical with them. And what I did was is I just told them to come back and I said, this is what they do to get back in the games. They get you frustrated. They want to beat you up. And they want you to get out of the game. And you start concentrating and thinking about the referees. And what my players did this that to today is they didn't think about it. They just kept attacking, attacking, attacking. And then when the calls wasn't going their way, then if their team got frustrated. And my team just started scoring and then forgot about it. And I kept that in their mind. Don't bite into what they're doing. Just play. And that's what we did, and we kept scoring. Uh, tonight's game was probably the most physical, the last game. Is that a trait that you guys would say that your team has more than the other teams because it definitely looked that way. Well, we got four big guys. Mm -hmm. You know, we got four big guys with these two and then Reggie and, and Kwame. So I, that's why I got this team like this because I want that. You know, uh, McMool didn't play a lot this today because he was too physical. You know, so like I said, with adding Quintel, I can get him to play that big guard and handle the basketball and him with Shark and handle the ball. If we got to play physical, we're going to play physical. If we got to play finesse, we're going to play finesse. We're going to adjust to whatever they want to do. And then they're going to have to beat us because I think we got five great basketball players that can play. And I can adjust to any one of, one of their lineups. And that's what we did in Trilogy today. We just adjusted to them. They wanted to play physical. We played physical. And I think we, we just outplayed them. Harry, how comfortable are you feeling with this squad that you have that you can that you can play physical or you can play finesse and, and going uh, all the way this year for the title? That was our goal from the day one. When I when I talked to these guys, I said we're not thinking about nothing else. We were a basket away from winning the championship last year, 
And this year, we were, I think we are a little bit better than we were last year. And I think that this team, if they keep continuing to play in the way they're playing right now and adjusting things, we have a great shot of winning it. And I know that we're going to be back there and we're going to have an opportunity to win it, but I want to keep them humble. I, my team doesn't go out and we don't go crazy. We don't think about the next day we're going to do all this talking and stuff. We do one day, one week at a time. It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a grind, one day. We take one week at a time. We got to go and play the killer threes next week in Oakland. All we worry about is killer threes and getting another basketball win. Rashard was uh, MVP last year. Is he basically like the perfect type of player for this sort of league? He's big, he's strong, physical, but he can also move like a guard and score the basketball. Does that fit perfectly in a league like this? It does. And Rashard knows that. That's why he got MVP last year because he's so versatile. He can post up and then he can go outside and shoot the three like he showed you today. He can shoot that three. He can go off the, off the dribble. He can do whatever he wants to do. Quintel is the same way. And I tell him all the time, I said, you guys don't have to settle for threes. You guys are so good at that y'all can get to the bucket whenever you want to and do whatever you want, especially when you're in foul trouble and you get the ball back after five fouls. I told both of them that. And both of their games are suited for three-on-three -three basketball. And, you know, I know Richard is really happy now because he don't have to do all his work. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have to do all the work this year. He's got people to help him, and it's making it easier for, for us, and it's making it easier for our team. Hey, Cortell, for, for those who aren't too familiar with you, can you talk about your experience uh, being uh, drafted out of junior college, playing in the NBA, going overseas, now coming back and playing this big, just talk about you. Well, I, I can just say it's a grind, you know what I mean? Just never give up, you know, just keep going. That's how that's all I did. I just kept going. Whatever, if it was the NBA or the overseas, now this league, do the best I can, whatever I can do. Just bring what I can bring to the table. So I'm a psychotherapist by trade, and I know a lot of NBA players struggle with mental health post-NBA career. Just saying, any uh, tips or advice on, like, how to stay a uh, <coughs> Well, with me, when these guys, they, they, people don't think that when you have a lot of money that you, that it's easy, that becomes hard and you have a lot of things to worry about. A lot of people to, to worry about. You got a lot of stress on your mind. I think what these guys have to really understand is they got to think about, you know, relaxing doing nothing else, you know, sometimes you got to stop all this running around. You got to take a time where you're going to be at home and you're going to sit for an hour or so and, and watch TV, you know, spend your time. You got to get your mind in a great place, a great situation, because you don't know if you stress because a lot of things be coming on your plate, about five and six, seven things come on your plate and you think that you're not stressing, but your mind is, your mind is stressing and it makes you go into that state. And I learned that um, at the basketball, you know, for two years I sat and did nothing and things started to fall. To, like I wasn't comfortable with what I wanted to do, you know. I wanted to do something else, but it was, it was not happening. It wasn't coming there. And then, you know, the money that you get that you was coming in, you start stressing about, oh, how am I going to keep this up? What am I going to do? And I just tell people what you have to do is just you have to get in a state of mind where you just stay stress-free. You know, you got to figure out things and don't worry about a lot of things. Relax sometimes. Don't always be doing the stuff you do. Sit down and watch TV a little bit. Enjoy your kids if you got kids. Enjoy your dogs if you got dogs. Do that type of stuff. Have fun. Go walking. You know, be around people. Be happy. You know, don't be all with that stress stuff all the time thinking about what I'm going to do. How am I going to make this money? If that's the case, downsize. Get you a little a lesser house that's not going to have that many bills. Get you a business that you know that's going to work for you. You know, do things like that, and that stress will come off you. You don't need 20 cars no more. You only got one seat. That's it. Go get you two cars, and you don't have to have that bill. Then all them insurance bills won't be coming. All of that stuff won't be coming. You have to have your mind in a great, what, great, a great place, but you got too much going on, and then you'll be fine. Gary Richard, what would you say last year you had a great response, lots of people came out. Now you're in year two, and in Chicago last year you were in a college arena and now you're playing in the United Center. Two questions. Do you think that had an impact on how players are playing in front of these large crowds? And why do you think so many people are gravitating to this? 
Um, I think, like you said, year one was a success, um, playing in NBA arenas. This year, playing in the United Center, packed crowd. Um, but it's summertime ball, more of a family atmosphere. People get to bring their kids out. Um, I really like what the big three is doing with the the, the, the youth three, the young three. I think it's great for not only uh, the adults, but for the kids to get the chance to play basketball in, on Thursday and then come and watch us play on a Friday. Um, but I think it's perfect for a family atmosphere, for, for something for, for families to do during the summertime. Uh, but we still compete at a high level. You get to see some of, your, some of the Hall of Fame guys, some of your role models that played in the NBA, play basketball, uh, rub elbows with them, get autographs, take pictures. It's a lot of things that we do for the communities when we go to these different cities. That's very important, especially for a place like Chicago.